as this uh, festival is about uh, mixing uh, culture and uh, traditions um, with uh, entrepreneurship, uh, I can't think of um, a more um, relevant and better um, character uh, that came to Greece from the East than uh, our beloved Karagiozis. So we're, we had planned to have um, uh, somebody uh, playing live uh, some uh, Karagiozis, which is a shadow puppet theater. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Mike Sarbas is the is the is the, is the uh, owner of the uh, Puppet Shadow Theatre in Greece, and uh, unfortunately he got sick because he got the COVID uh, vaccination and uh, he he has very high temperature, so it only um, he only got sick today. So unfortunately he will not join us today, but. Um, Mike has uh, promised to come and uh, visit us. Uh, he made that pro uh, promise three years ago and he's intending to keep it. He's just waiting for our uh, invitation. He wants to come and build um, Karagiozis uh, uh, Puppet Shadow Theatre uh, for the Greek school. Uh, so we will just enjoy a bit of uh, uh, Karagiozis now, the, the, the small video that uh, uh, Thodoris uh, Theo, uh, has prepared for us uh, instead of Mike's uh, Harbas. And um, we will then uh, move back to Tina and um, that um, and Colenzo books because um, a huge discovery was made by Anthony Hurst <laughs> um, on Karagiozis. Uh, so we, he, Anthony will tell us all about that. <laughs> Uh, now, we heard from Bon uh, Kozumi that he participated in a very successful conference in Levkada where Japanese shadow theatre was presented. Uh, you produced a book on the very famous shadow puppet theatre, Karyogos, in English. How did that come about? Oh, well, there it is. Very yeah, good. Uh, yes. Reflection. I can see and it. This, this came about um, because it came about because of Theodore Stephanides. So I have to start with him. Okay. Because these are his translations. They're not they're translations from memory of three Karagiozis scripts. Yeah. Personally, I've seen Karagiozis twice in live, once at a conference in Corfu, and once more interestingly, entirely by chance in the square of a city in Northern Greece. I think it was Florida. Um, but when, if I go back a bit, when I was briefly for three years, the director of the Doral School of Corfu, we did two things. One, we published the first um, the Stephanides uh, book for a long time called Autumn Gleanings. Yes. Corfu Memoirs and Poems. And we also unveiled a plaque on the building where he used to have his consulting room. And at that point, we invited his daughter, um, Alexia Stefanidis Mercuri, to come to Corfu and to take part in the unveiling and to speak to us. And I got to know her after that very well. Um, those, if you know, those English people who know Stefanidis know him as the mentor mainly of Gerald Dole, because he's a character on oh, his yeah. own. Yeah in my family and other animals. But um, what this, this time, this point in time, a very strange publication had come about in France, which was 
the publication of Stephanides' letters to Lawrence Durrell, but not in the original English, only in Greek and French translations. And Alexia and I agreed that we ought to publish them in English. This hasn't happened yet. But then she told me that the that all of her father's papers were in a filing cabinet in the cellar of a house in London where one of her sons still lived. And um, it took about five years for the son to actually find them. Ooh. When he found them, there was a four drawer filing cabinet absolutely stocked with folders of all of typescripts mainly of Theodore's work. And among those were the Caravioso scripts. In fact, they had two of them had been published in a, a sort of Greek newspaper in London called the Greek Gazette in the nineteen in the nineteen seventies. One of them had never been seen before, and of course, not many people have read the Greek Gazette. So that's how that book came into existence. That's amazing. And it's part of, part of a much bigger project, which is to um, <coughs> publish or republish everything that that Stephanides wrote, and he was an extraordinary polymath. He was a fully trained doctor and a radiologist who trained under Marie Curie in Paris. He was an astronomer who discovered a crater on the moon, which was named after him. He was a, a naturalist specializing in the biology of fresh water. And um, he was a poet and a short story writer and a prolific translator of Greek poetry from um, Sappho to the mid 19th century. Gosh, what a fulfilled life. And I so, mean, so, so diverse, amazing. So what was partly behind my um, publishing, going into publishing, was this idea to, to put Stephanides back into print. Or Very. into print. I've got five or six quite large volumes in an advanced state of preparation now. So you're a very busy man too. <laughs> uh, much too busy, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Tell me, were you always interested in Greek folklore and culture, literature, literature and poetry? Uh, it grew slowly. <laughs> it grew slowly because my first contact with Greek, anything Greek was learning New Testament Greek. Oh, really? Because I went, I, when I was a teenager, I had in mind to become a priest in the Anglican Church. Um, I went to Cambridge to study theology. When I had an interview for Cambridge, they just said to me, get some A-levels, no grades were ever specified, and learn Greek and we'll see you in 18 months time. Really? So I got a book and over the six months period before I went to university, I taught myself New Testament Greek. And about a year after my first year in Cambridge, I visited Greece for the first time, that would be 1964. And I've been an irregular visitor ever since. So. Uh, so where were you born? In in the UK? Oh yes, in the UK, in Huddersfield, in Yorkshire. Ah, and you grew up in Yorkshire, did you? Yes, yes. Ah, um, so you, you developed an interest in theology. At what age? Very young? About 15. Oh really? <laughs> and that's what learned, led you to learning Greek? To, to get yeah. into university. And yes. <clears throat> so you started the International Byzantine Greek Summer School. Uh, tell me a bit about that. Well, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't actually me that started it. It's, ah. It was started in 2002 by a colleague of mine when I was teaching in Queen's University, Belfast. But at that stage, it was, it was only um, a two week course for beginners. And when I took it over in 2006, when my colleague Bob Jordan retired, um, I gradually built it up into what it is now, which is a, it goes on for a month and the four different levels. And it's moved from Belfast to the University of Birmingham and then in 2016 to Trinity College Dublin. Oh, okay. So it, it moves around a lot. Where after that, or is it going to stay in Trinity? Well, I hope it's going to stay in Trinity because oh. it's much better there than it's a much more um, welcoming environment for us. Yes, than, it's than a wonderful it. environment, really. I mean, amazing. Um, Anthony, thank you so much. It's been very, very interesting speaking to you. And uh, the, the best of luck going forward with all your, your different amazing things.
Well, I'm hoping that most of all of my books connected with Greece are going to be on uh, the, um, the Hellenic Community's bookshop site soon. Oh, good. Yes. Well, do get in touch uh, immediately and let us know. We'd be more than delighted. Yeah, and there was a little video of all the book covers, but it seems to have been missed out. Oh, no, really? Oh, we'll have to look at that. We'll have to add it in. Thank you so <laughs> much. We will. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anthony. Good night. Good night.